I found, Jeff, that this book, I, I'm just talking it up to people and, you know, it, it's very important to me. And um, I want to read a, a, just to just to illustrate some of the, what you were just saying in what you were saying last about the oversell. Yeah. 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 Maybe you can highlight a little bit more for our listeners as well to get a, a clear. It's all in this book. You can read it. This book is very clear. The ego self is the creature born out of man's own doing and thinking, slowly changing and growing. The over self is the image of God, perfect, finished, and changeless. What he has to do, if he is to fulfill himself, is to lay, let the one shine through the other. How close is this? Is his relationship to that other self, that godlike over self? And not only his mind's relationship, but also his body's. For in the center of every cell, in blood, marrow, flesh, and bone, there is the void that holds and is pure spirit. The ego is not really killed. How, without body and intellect, emotion and will, could anyone act in this world? But the center of being is moved out of it to the over self. One, yes, you're yeah, right. yeah, 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 there it is. Yes. And this is something I think is so important in so many ways. One is that we're not an antagonist. We're not in an antagonistic relationship with ourselves or with our ego. It is a vehicle in which we are moving into the over self. Yeah, one should have great respect for the long struggle that one goes through through many lives to develop the personality and its talents, to become something that can really express the higher self. People uh, tend to confuse what I like to call the personality with uh, what I would call the ego. And even in PB's writing, sometimes it's not always clear. He talks about ego, personality, they seem somewhat exchangeable. The personality is like all your processes of your thinking, your feeling, willing, you know, the impulses, your uh, intuitions, your imagination, creativity, your ability to create things. Uh, you know, they're all part of the personality. Um, that by itself is fine, as you read. The, the over-self, which lives in an eternal present, it's active in the eternal present, is not a form. It's not a content. It's not a. It's not something that you can grasp like you grasp, um, you know, your phone or <laughs> your cell phone or whatever. It's it's not something like that. It informs. It its intelligence guides, but intelligence is like formless in itself. If you know what I'm saying, it, it's it's like something like sunlight that pervades. But you don't actually see light, right? You see what it is lighting. Yes. It's like the overself is your awareness. You don't see the awareness. You can't know that power of knowing, which is your overself. But you do know what it's revealing to you. And um, so, what I was trying to say before, when we talk about giving up the ego, it doesn't mean like, it's not like suicide, right? We're not trying to kill the personality or beat ourselves down in some way to submission, like some kind of ascetic, you know, treatment of oneself. A certain discipline is necessary on the long path. We understand that. But it's really that what you read, the shift of one's identity or a sense of being to the over-self from the personality. Then the personality remains less, you know, not an obstacle anymore, although the development of personality goes on forever. It's not like you cross the finish line and there's nothing more to learn. What you realize when you realize the, the goal of the short path is who you really are. But now, that you, now you've got the alignment and the integrity is in place. Now the personality can really serve that. And it continues to grow and learn. The virtues, as the Dalai Lama has expressed and I've seen elsewhere, the virtues can grow forever. It's our ignorance that can come to an end. And the ignorance is the thinking that we are less than what we actually are. Yes. Do you uh, follow? Is yeah. That, is yeah. that clear? Yes, yes, it is clear. Um, the so thing, I, it yeah. always bothers me when people are beating up on themselves. Oh, I'm so bad about blah, blah, oh. blah, blah. You know, because um, 
it's kind of sad because it shows in a way that you don't actually believe that divinity is within you, that, you know, the Christ is in your heart. Um, and in those moments of beating, if one really thought that the divine was present here and now in this moment, you would just become silent. You know, you wouldn't um, engage in that kind of self-flagellation. You'd respect how far you've come in this life and how many things you have learned. Um, And at the same time, you know, love that inner source of your being that's been guiding this whole process through incarnations. It's an amazing journey once we can uh, open ourselves up to that. You know, in, in, yes, and I think yeah. the, the book serves the book serves this purpose in a way because it lays out the whole path. You know, it discusses the long path, the short path, um, how you move from one to the other, warnings about jumping to the short path too soon or uh, slightly misguidedly, practices you know for the short path, and um, and some of the results that can come, and the nature of the sage as well at the end. So it kind of gives you an overview of the path. You can read it and kind of say, oh, yeah, I kind of get this part, but I'm still working on that part. And it's, um, it's a system which can be applied to anybody's practice. It's not, it's not like it's part of a given religious path with a certain tradition to it, you know, like Christianity or Tibetan Buddhism or various, uh, you know, Advaita Vedanta or different other traditions, it's not, it, it's kind of extracted out of that. PB, his mastery was kind of to revision for people the Asian, the, the Asian traditions, but in a terminology, he uses very few, you know, Asian terms, in a terminology that, and a kind of way of expressing that's directly understood easily understood by Western readers. So I, I, that's one reason I really like him. He's very straightforward, and um, he orients one as quickly as possible to one's own inner being as the source that we would have the most respect for. Even if we follow other teachers, and you know our path leads us one way or another, I've certainly followed many different pathways and sub-pathways, but always come back to one's own sense that the the real goodness is within me, and it, and if I um, turn to it, answers will come. You, you know, like sometimes if you're working on a problem and you you kind of exhaust yourself, you just can't make a decision one way or another. Sometimes, you know, the common wisdom is we'll sleep on it. Well, actually, sleep is very close to the over-self. And waking up from sleep, if you, you've had something bothering you, sometimes the answer just is right there. You know, the clarity is there. Um, you know, there's various techniques for these things, and that's, that's um, one kind of exercise one can do to help orient oneself to one's own inner being as the source of guidance. There's a, there's a lot to be said for intuition. You, you just an inner knowing. Maybe yes. maybe it's grace that bestows. It is grace. It is grace that bestows on us this knowledge that, that we don't know where it came from, but we have it. Yes, and you know the lucky hunches or the that kind of sense of guidance. Yeah, you know it, it's a, it's good to know the source. There's so much about our what we normally think of as our self. You know, just in the ordinary sense. There's so much about it that flows. It's like the grace flowing into us. We just don't recognize the source. We don't. We don't see that it's really coming from within us. And if we would reorient ourselves consciously in that direction, the flow gets stronger and stronger. Yes, and uh, and then and then we're encouraged because we we know we're we are stepping into the flow. And, and, That's right. And, and, and then we see the results. I can say for sure that um, parts of my life have been surrendered to this, 
and and for instance the way this show works um very little effort um i've just surrendered it all it almost seems i mean i do the leg work and and everything but uh i i totally trust uh, uh, you know what's happening as if as if there's a like this invisible hand working in this yes bringing you various People, situations, books, I don't know what Absolute, all, the music, everything. You know, the, you know, that you become, when you put yourself yeah. in the flow, yeah. it just gets stronger usually. If your intentions are good, which obviously they are, yeah. then often the universe will reinforce you. Unless, you know, it's not 100%, you can't always predict no. the outcome. That's what grace means. Grace could be the hard times that fall on you that, that cause you to reorient parts of yourself that are um, a little bit, you know, stiff and unyielding and, um, you know, biased one way or another or whatever. But, you know, that sometimes worldly trouble is really grace in disguise. And that, that, that is grace, too. But in, insofar as this show is, is concerned in the, in the radio work that I do here at the station, um, you know, it, it feels... It feels um, the hard part is not there, you know, is that, that you know, that part of grace, uh, um, it's just, um, it's just a f- effortless flow. I mean, I do the work of, I'd read the books. I, uh, I put together a newsletter. I, you know, obviously it takes effort on my part to walk from my car and we're not, we don't have a parking lot that's right near the building. So I go to walk a little ways. You got to carry, carry material. You got to, you got to prepare and bring the material. You've got to take time out and every, but that's all. That's because my intention is so strong in doing it, and 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 yet, yeah, because I I'm totally committed. So, but I I feel like I got a helping hand in this, you know. Yes. Well, you sound like you're inspired by it, and that very inspiration is a gift from of grace. It is a gift from grace. I want to make sure people um, uh, know that they can go to paulbrunton dot o r g p a u l b r u n t o n dot o r g and to further explore his teachings and books on uh, on most every aspect of the spiritual path and you know since i've uh, picked up this book and started reading in preparation for this show jeff um i i've 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 been so happy i brought this to a um a an ashram uh this past weekend and it was the perfect book to read in such a peaceful setting in uh, downstate New York called Ananda Ashram. They're celebrating yeah. their 50th anniversary, founded by Brahmananda Saraswati, formerly Dr. Mishra. And uh, their philosophy is on Vedanta. And I talk with them um, about this. And, uh, you know, the teachings that they were teaching there was dovetailing so beautifully with what I was reading in the book. It was like, wow, <laughs> this is great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that you'll find that to be the case with the with the book. I think that PB um, his with the wisdom that he was offered and that he's brought forth um, it has a universal quality to it and a ring of truth. It really does, um, right? But always, you know, it's not until you get in the boat and start rowing that you find out. Um, you know, for yourself, which is really the important part. And that's what it is. I've been in the boat rowing, and that's when I picked up the book. I was, I have been rowing the book, and then uh, rowing the boat, and here's the book. <laughs> yes, it's it, it, yes. it's just like confirming what I what I've been doing. Yes, it's, it's really wonderful. It's 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 amazing. It's like you know, open my. You know, there's that amazing grace. How sweet it is. You know yeah. the song. Yeah. And one of the lines is something about who opens your eyes, right? I forget the exact words. Maybe you know, who opened allowed me to see. You know. So, it is. It is a, a greater clarity comes with the proper orientation to one's higher self in life. I want a greater re- clarity a greater, naturally comes. And a greater clarity naturally comes. One of the practices yes. that that are in this book is about remembrance or act as if or the two you know i mean that's right i like yes. yeah because when i which i've been doing when you consciously act as if this reality is already true in you if you if you already know it's true you just then you it's easier to do that and 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 so uh 
and but but in order to do that, you have to what the what are the practices is remembrance. If you don't mind, if I read a little bit more here. No, please. It's important that you brought that up. Yeah, uh, one of the most valuable forms of yoga is the yoga of constant remembrance. Its subject may be a mystical experience, intuition, or idea. In essence, it is really an endeavor to insert the transcendental atmosphere into the mundane life. The loving, adoring recollection of the over-self, the constant return to memory of it amid the world's distractions, the reiteration of this divine thought as a permanent background to all other thinking, is itself a yoga path. Indeed, it is the same as that taught by St. Paul when he wrote, Pray without ceasing and bring every thought into captivity to Jesus Christ. So, I mean, this remembrance, this has been very helpful to me because, it, you know, because when you forget, then remember again. Yes, you develop the habit of remembering and your your the training of it will actually help you to re- recall naturally. It'll become more uh, as a natural flow and less of an effort. And that can become a very happy experience. It's part of the reorientation. And you, uh, it, people can begin the remembrance of the short path early on in their practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul Brunton gave me uh, the short path teaching in 1975. Wow. Uh, Up to then, I was trying to do, you know, spiritual athletics, and I continued Mm. to do long path kind of struggles and so on for a long, long time. But that introduction to the short path and the practice of remembrance, uh, you know, stayed with me forever. It's like what what can one actually do more than remembering the divine in each moment you know it just provides that like i said that it's the orientation that saves you that that really like in the amazing grace song yeah. you saved a wretch like me You're right. you know who saved instead of a wretch you could substitute you know personality bound ego bound struggling individual trying to make ends meet exactly. not seeing any beauty anywhere yeah. you know yeah this is what this is the, the grace that saves you yeah so um it, by relinquishing you of yourself in a way in the end you surrender the part that we we, we used to think was ourselves and used to act as if it were ourselves we we when we come to this uh, point or part in our process when we recognize it isn't and we're happy to let it go because we see the burden of it. Yes, and you just said the key word. You you acted as if it was yourself. Now you start acting as if <laughs> in the short path it's your higher self that's really doing the thing. Exactly, so, exactly. You know, that's it's that part of that reorientation reorientation process. It's exactly. That, that and that's I'm so happy to do this, you know. It, it is, you know, Paul Brunton in the book somewhere says the proper facial expression for someone on the short path <laughs> is a smile, you know, because you, yeah. it's kind of like you know something, you know a big secret, you know, yeah. and, it's, and it's really um, making things click for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that up. I remember that uh, when I read it, and it, 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 it's so true. Um, you always seen people, uh, uh, spiritual beings, that they have this contented smile on their face, unforced, just, just, just deep contentment, you know. Uh, it's the Buddha's expression, right? Yeah. Almost every Buddha you see, yeah, has that kind of quiet. There's a quietness about it, yeah, because it's in the silence that the overself really communicates. And you in can that feel silence, it. there's yeah. also you can feel it. There's a joy. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel the presence of the overself through that person. Yes, exactly. Yes, when you're around somebody yeah. that you, where you feel the quiet, you the can quiet. also feel a kind of a joy is there with it, and a clarity of mind. Wow, uh, <laughs> I'm going through a process. It's very interesting, uh, Jeff, and uh, I'm really enjoying talking about this. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Are we at the end of the show? We're pretty close to it. Um, I'd like to mention that yeah. the book is uh, published by Larson Publications, and yeah. their website is Larson, L-A-R-S-O-N, publications.com, yes. and it's on their you know their front page. And also the paulbrutton.org site really is full of information. Yeah. Uh, you, you can read, uh, there are a lot of teachings available on that site. 
just to go and explore the links. I, I think you'll find it quite a satisfying meal. Uh, yes, paulbrunton.org. And also, uh, I'm glad you mentioned Larson Publication because they publish a lot of good books. A lot yes, of they publish books. the entire six. They publish a lot of good spiritual literature, but also the sixteen volume notebooks of Paul Brunton that contain wow. much of his um, writing he did that was never published until Larson Publication published it. It's his. It's his mature work. Okay. So yeah. anyway, you could explore around the Paul Brunton books that um, that Larson Publications has on their site. Well, you know, I've heard of Paul Brunton. I think I may have read something about uh, from him a long time ago. Uh, but I, but, uh, but this book has really opened my eyes to uh, to the amazing uh, clarity of 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 his uh, description of the path. Um, I've never quite read it like this. I have to admit, I read a lot of books, and I have a lot of guests on my program. But this, the way it's presented here, it's like a like a breath of fresh air it really comes through really clear long path short path it, you know what it means maybe it's just because it's just describing in a lot of ways what what has been my journey you know yes I'm probably a lot of people's journey and, and and probably a lot of people's journey so uh i you know let me just read finally uh just something yeah, about sure. the, the short path um the over-self is not a goal to be attained, but a realization of what it already is. It is in the inalienable possession of all conscious beings, and not a mere few. No effort is needed to get hold of the over-self, but every effort is needed to get rid of the many impediments to its recognition. We cannot take hold of it. It takes hold of us. Therefore, the last stage of this quest is an effortless one. We are led as children by the hand into the resplendent presence our weary strivings come to an abrupt end. Our lips are made shut and wordless. I think I can end it on that. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'd love to have further conversations with you sometime on the program if you're open to it, Jeff. Of course, anytime, Gary, and I'll uh, send you an email after this, and also so we'll be in touch. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for inviting. Okay, take care. Bye.